G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Tuesday just after lunchtime here in Australia, market has come down a little bit, so down 1.5%, just holding on to that $2.4 trillion mark. BTC dominance hasn't changed, again, it's always around sort of 40% at the moment. There is a little bit of volume, which is interesting, uh, considering the prices are still going down a bit. And Bitcoin price has dropped below 50,000. So it got up above 51, I think it got up above 52,000 and has quickly been rejected from there. And gas prices have risen a little bit as well. So, you know, they were down in the threes and the fours and they basically doubled overnight. So definitely an interesting market at the moment. All right, so let's have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours? But remembering we are down 1.5%. Right, Icon made a bit of a move, 17%, Sushi, 16%, Spell Token, never heard of it, 11%, Raven, Ave continuing to make moves, it's not going sort of crazy at the moment, but again, remember, this was down at $160 not that long ago, so it's not too far off doubling its price in a matter of, yeah, like two or three weeks, Filecoin making a bit of a move, Uniswap continues to make a move, so it's pretty volatile as you can see, but making moves, so very nice. And again, the DeFi plays. I think when DeFi starts to do really well, I think that, in my personal opinion, never financial advice, is going to be an indication of things have slowed down in the market. People aren't going to be getting gains from the individual products, so they're going to start seeking yield elsewhere, i.e. DeFi. Now, I'm not saying that's what's happening right now. I just think that's what you're going to see in the future. DeFi is always going to be around. People are always going to be seeking yield. But I think when the market goes a little bit cold, and again, it's kind of flattened out, I think DeFi rises. When DeFi then starts to drop off a little bit, it'll be because people are now more bullish on the market and will start to go, you know, look to buy plays that we that will do uh, outperform the you know four maybe ten percent you're getting on stable coins. Now that's my prediction for the future. Though. I'm not saying that's happening right now. All right, a couple of nice double digit gains, and then we're into the single digits, and they probably don't go down too far. No, they don't. All right, so losses. What's been hit the worst in the top one hundred? All right, so Rose or Oasis Networks down, Curves down, Atoms down, Lunas down. Near, look, we got some double digit uh, losses there, and then just some single digits. And look, even Matic has come down. I think they got to $2.81, heading towards $3, and we have had a rejection. The market is still unsure of exactly what it wants to do and where it wants to go. So just keep that in mind. All right, now what I want to do is go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So as we can see, we did get rejected. I thought we were going to set a new high, but we basically just tipped kind of the old, this high, this is the one where we really needed to break. We need to get above that kind of 52,000. We can see it just wicked and it's already starting to roll over. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to completely roll over and it's done. we got to wait and see. But if this comes down into here and we fall back into this channel, that could be quite bearish for a while. Now, again, a falling wedge is technically a bullish pattern. Because once it gets to the bottom of it, wherever it is, whether it's this might have been the bottom or whether it's got to come down to here or whether it's got to come down to here, wherever it is, eventually they usually explode upwards. So what we're hoping is that this is going to bounce once preferably or maybe two or three times off the outside of this line and then start to shoot up. If we fall straight back down in here, then that can be quite bearish and we can, can come quite lower. So we just got to wait and see. Now... Here's the upside though. S&P 500, new all-time high, so 47.97. Now what I want you to have a look is if you somehow managed to buy the absolute bottom uh, from the March crash in 2020, the everything crash, and rode it right up to now, you've basically doubled your money. You got a 119% return, which is not bad, and you've done that in about a year and a half. That's not too bad. Let's go over, have a look at the Dow Jones Index. It is nearing all-time highs. So what I want you to remember about that is they are recovering. Now, Bitcoin will usually sort of follow suit. Sometimes it can lead, sometimes it'll lag. It'll all really depend, and there's more to it. It's not just simply if the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 are doing well, the Bitcoin does well. But what we do know is if they're not doing well, 
Bitcoin will definitely follow. And it's not just doing, you know, it's not just they see a couple of losses like this means Bitcoin has to go down. No, but if you see big losses like this, you can absolutely guarantee that Bitcoin eventually will follow. Now, will that last forever? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But there is an absolute correlation. So all I'm looking for is they are starting to surge. So I think Bitcoin is most likely going to follow suit. It's just, is it going to do it today? Is it going to do it tomorrow? Or is it going to wait until sort of January, February? That's the million dollar question. Now, here's the other thing I want you to look at. If you managed to buy, you know, back in October 2020, you're up 40%. Now, let's go back to the crash of everything. So this is traditional stocks. We're currently right here. So again, if you manage to buy the absolute bottom, the wick, and it's unlikely, you're probably more likely to have bought around here or around here. If you did get in then, you're going to have been able to write it up maybe to double your money. Right. Nothing wrong with doubling your money. And as most people say, this is a much safer bet. That's true. But I want you to remember why people are in crypto and here's why the year's top 10 crypto asset gainers outshine bitcoin and ethereum's 12 month returns now bitcoin's done well in the last 12 months and so has ethereum but this is why i'm in cryptocurrencies gala 200 thousand percent it's up Axie Infinity, 18,000%. Content Value Network, 18,000%. Terra Luna, 17,500%. Sandbox, 17,500%. Ecomi, 16,500%. Solana, 15,000%. Polygon, 14,000%. Phantom, 13,000%. And Flux, 11,000%. Now, it's not easy to find these kind of things, but it's not impossible either. You try and go find a stock to do something like this, it'll probably take you a decade. Whereas in cryptocurrencies, these things happen at least semi-regularly, and that is why I'm in cryptocurrencies. Now, I do want to say, you're probably unlikely to find anything like this in the near future. But I'm not saying it's impossible. You're going to have to really go, you know, do some deep diving and things like that. But look how many of these are. I guarantee if you enter the stock market, you're not going to find that many of things like this that have done something like this in the last 12 months. It just doesn't happen. So that's why I come to the cryptocurrency market. And what's scary is if we're still in a bull market and things are still going to continue to go up, it doesn't mean we can't go down for a little bit longer. But if things still go up, Gala could still easily five, maybe even 10x from here, depending on where the market goes. But it wouldn't be impossible. Axie Infinity could probably do a five or a 10x. Now, again, the 10x is really pushing it. That's getting super optimistic. But I don't think it'll be too hard to expect for Axie Infinity to 5x if Bitcoin goes to over $100,000. Content Value Network, same thing. Terra Luna, wouldn't be surprised if it does a three or a 4x. Maybe even still a 5x. Again, it, to just double sort of your money, 100, you know, 100% has taken all this time. And you come over here, and in less than 12 months, they've done these kind of returns. That is why I'm in cryptocurrencies, ladies and gentlemen, but it is still very risky. And these can go up by this much. Just be careful that if we hit a bear market, you're going to lose 99% of a couple of these at least, and the others will probably still see 70 to 80 plus percent uh, retracements on these. And so that's, you know, the old market, they couldn't handle it. And they're going to tell you this is dead and it's done for. They don't like volatility. They just like stability. Stability is great, but volatility is your friend. Now, it can also be your enemy and the downsides, but if you're in good projects and you can hold and you can buy the dips and, you know, layer in and layer out and all those kind of things, you can make thousands of percent gains. And people have done it. Plenty of people have done it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's not a lot of news going on, so I just wanted to show you that, you know, these charts, they're 
you know, they're setting all-time highs for S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is getting up close to new all-time highs. I don't think Bitcoin's going to be too far behind. This, it may be there already. This could be the bottom, and now it's just going to start to make its way up. We have to wait and see. But these kind of levels are still in play. Not 100% sold on this level being in play, but I definitely think we can come down and retest kind of the 40,000s. That's not to say we will. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but hey, some of the altcoins are doing all right, and I'll see you next time.